The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People (NAACP) is a civil rights organization in the United States, formed in 1909 as a bi-racial endeavor to advance justice for African Americans by a group including W. E. B. Du Bois, Mary White Ovington, and Morefield Story. Its mission in the 21st century is to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights of all persons and to eliminate race-based discrimination. National NAACP initiatives include political lobbying, publicity efforts and litigation strategies developed by its legal team. The group enlarged its mission in the late 20th century by considering issues such as police misconduct, the status of black foreign refugees and questions of economic development. Its name, retained in accordance with tradition, uses the once common term colored people, referring to those with some African ancestry. The NAACP bestows annual awards to people of color in two categories, image awards are for achievement in the arts and entertainment, and Spingarn medals are for outstanding achievement of any kind. Its headquarters is in Baltimore, Maryland. Organization <laughs> 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 The NAACP is headquartered in Baltimore, with additional regional offices in New York, Michigan, Georgia, Maryland, Texas, Colorado and California. Each regional office is responsible for coordinating the efforts of state conferences in that region. Local, youth, and college chapters organize activities for individual members. In the U.S., the NAACP is administered by a 64-member board, led by a chairperson. The board elects one person as the president and one as chief executive officer for the organization. Ben Jealous is its most recent and youngest president, selected to replace Bruce S. Gordon, who resigned in March 2007. Julian Bond, civil rights movement activist and former Georgia state senator, was chairman until replaced in February 2010 by health care administrator Roslyn Brock. For decades in the first half of the 20th century, the organization was effectively led by its executive secretary, who acted as chief operating officer. James Weldon Johnson and Walter F. White, who served in that role successively from 1920 to 1958, were much more widely known as NAACP leaders than were presidents during those years. Departments within the NAACP govern areas of action. Local chapters are supported by the Branch and Field Services Department and the Youth and College Department. The Legal Department focuses on court cases of broad application to minorities, such as systematic discrimination in employment, government, or education. The Washington, D.C. Bureau is responsible for lobbying the U.S. government, and the Education Department works to improve public education at the local, state and federal levels. The goal of the Health Division is to advance health care for minorities through public policy initiatives and education. As of 2007, the NAACP had approximately 425,000 paying and non paying members. The NAACP's non current records are housed at the Library of Congress, which has served as the organization's official repository since 1964. The records held there comprise approximately 5 million items spanning the NAACP's history from the time of its founding until 2003. In 2011, the NAACP teamed with the digital repository ProQuest to digitize and host online the earlier portion of its archives, through 1972 nearly 2 million pages of documents, from the national, legal, and branch offices throughout the country, which offer first-hand insight into the organization's work related to such crucial issues as lynching, school desegregation, and discrimination in all its aspects in the military, the criminal justice system, employment, housing. Predecessor, the Niagara Movement The Pan American Exposition of 1901 in Buffalo, New York featured many American innovations and achievements, but also included a disparaging caricature of slave life in the South as well as a depiction of life in Africa, called, "...old plantation," and "...darkest Africa," respectively. A local African American woman, Mary Talbert of Ohio, was appalled by the exhibit, as a similar one in Paris highlighted black achievements. She informed W.E.B. Dubois of the situation, and a coalition began to form. In 1905, a group of 32 prominent African American leaders met to discuss the challenges facing people of color and possible strategies and solutions. 
They were particularly concerned by the Southern states' disenfranchisement of blacks starting with Mississippi's passage of a new constitution in 1890. Through 1908, Southern legislatures dominated by white Democrats ratified new constitutions and laws creating barriers to voter registration and more complex election rules. In practice, this caused the exclusion of most blacks and many poor whites from the political system in Southern states, crippling the Republican Party in most of the South. Black voter registration and turnout dropped markedly in the South as a result of such legislation. Men who had been voting for 30 years in the South were told they did not qualify to register. White-dominated legislatures also passed segregation and Jim Crow laws. Because hotels in the U.S. were segregated, the men convened in Canada at the Erie Beach Hotel on the Canadian side of the Niagara River in Fort Erie, Ontario. As a result, the group came to be known as the Niagara Movement. A year later, three non-African Americans joined the group, journalist William English Walling, a wealthy socialist, and social workers Mary White Ovington and Henry Moskowitz. Moskowitz, who was Jewish, was then also associate leader of the New York Society for Ethical Culture. They met in 1906 at Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, and in 1907 in Boston, Massachusetts. The fledgling group struggled for a time with limited resources and internal conflict, and disbanded in 1910. Seven of the members of the Niagara Movement joined the board of directors of the NAACP, founded in 1909. Although both organizations shared membership and overlapped for a time, the Niagara Movement was a separate organization. Historically, it is considered to have had a more radical platform than the NAACP. The Niagara Movement was formed exclusively by African Americans. Three European Americans were among the founders of the NAACP. History <laughs> Formation The race riot of 1908 in Springfield, Illinois, the state capital and President Abraham Lincoln's hometown, was a catalyst showing the urgent need for an effective civil rights organization in the U.S. In the decades around the turn of the century, the rate of lynchings of blacks, particularly men, was at a high. Mary White Ovington, journalist William English Walling and Henry Moskowitz met in New York City in January 1909 to work on organizing for black civil rights. They sent out solicitations for support to more than 60 prominent Americans, and set a meeting date for February 12, 1909. This was intended to coincide with the 100th anniversary of the birth of President Abraham Lincoln, who emancipated enslaved African Americans. While the first large meeting did not take place until three months later, the February date is often cited as the founding date of the organization. The NAACP was founded on February 12, 1909, by a larger group including African Americans W. E. B. Du Bois, Ida B. Wells, Archibald Grimke, Mary Church Terrell, and the previously named Whites Henry Moskowitz, Mary White Ovington, William English Walling the wealthy socialist son of a former slave-holding family, Florence Kelly, a social reformer and friend of Du Bois, Oswald Garrison Villard, and Charles Edward Russell, a renowned muckraker and close friend of Walling. Russell helped plan the NAACP and had served as acting chairman of the National Negro Committee 1909, a forerunner to the NAACP. On May 30, 1909, the Niagara Movement Conference took place at New York City's Henry Street Settlement House. They created an organization of more than 40, identifying as the National Negro Committee. Among other founding members was Lillian Wald, a nurse who had founded the Henry Street Settlement where the conference took place. Du Bois played a key role in organizing the event and presided over the proceedings. Also in attendance was Ida B. Wells Barnett, an African-American journalist and anti-lynching crusader. At their second conference on May 30, 1910, members chose the new organization's name to be the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and elected its first officers. National President, Moorfield Story, Boston Chairman of the Executive Committee, William English Walling Treasurer, John E. Milholland, a Lincoln Republican and Presbyterian from New York City and Lewis, New York. Disbursing Treasurer, Oswald Garrison Villard. Executive Secretary, Francis Bloskower. Director of Publicity and Research, W. E. B. Du Bois. The NAACP was incorporated a year later in 1911. The association's charter expressed its mission. 
to promote equality of rights and to eradicate caste or race prejudice among the citizens of the United States, to advance the interest of colored citizens, to secure for them impartial suffrage, and to increase their opportunities for securing justice in the courts, education for the children, employment according to their ability and complete equality before law. The larger conference resulted in a more diverse organization, where the leadership was predominantly white. Moorefield Story, a white attorney from a Boston abolitionist family, served as the president of the NAACP from its founding to 1915. At its founding, the NAACP had one African American on its executive board, Dubois. Story was a longtime classical liberal and Grover Cleveland Democrat who advocated laissez faire free markets, the gold standard, and anti imperialism. Story consistently and aggressively championed civil rights, not only for blacks but also for Native Americans and immigrants he opposed immigration restrictions. Dubois continued to play a pivotal leadership role in the organization, serving as editor of the association's magazine, The Crisis, which had a circulation of more than 30,000. The Crisis was used both for news reporting and for publishing African American poetry and literature. During the organization's campaigns against lynching, Dubois encouraged the writing and performance of plays and other expressive literature about this issue. The Jewish community contributed greatly to the NAACP's founding and continued financing. Jewish historian Howard Satcher writes in his book A History of Jews in America that, in 1914, Professor Emeritus Joel Spingarn of Columbia University became chairman of the NAACP and recruited for its board such Jewish leaders as Jacob Schiff, Jacob Bilikoff, and Rabbi Stephen Wise. <laughs> Jim Crow and disenfranchisement In its early years, the NAACP was based in New York City. It concentrated on litigation in efforts to overturn disenfranchisement of blacks, which had been established in every southern state by 1908, excluding most from the political system, and the Jim Crow statutes that legalized racial segregation. In 1913, the NAACP organized opposition to President Woodrow Wilson's introduction of racial segregation into federal government policy, workplaces, and hiring. African American women's clubs were among the organizations that protested Wilson's changes, but the administration did not alter its assuagement of Southern cabinet members and the Southern bloc in Congress. By 1914, the group had 6,000 members and 50 branches. It was influential in winning the right of African Americans to serve as military officers in World War I. 600 African American officers were commissioned and 700,000 men registered for the draft. The following year, the NAACP organized a nationwide protest, with marches in numerous cities, against D.W. Griffith's silent movie The Birth of a Nation, a film that glamorized the Ku Klux Klan. As a result, several cities refused to allow the film to open. The NAACP began to lead lawsuits targeting disfranchisement and racial segregation early in its history. It played a significant part in the challenge of Gin v. United States 1915 to Oklahoma's discriminatory grandfather clause, which effectively disenfranchised most black citizens while exempting many whites from certain voter registration requirements. It persuaded the Supreme Court of the United States to rule in Buchanan v. Worley in 1917 that state and local governments cannot officially segregate African Americans into separate residential districts. The court's opinion reflected the jurisprudence of property rights and freedom of contract as embodied in the earlier precedent it established in Lochner v. New York. In 1916, Chairman Joel Spingarn invited James Weldon Johnson to serve as field secretary. Johnson was a former U.S. consul to Venezuela and a noted African-American scholar and columnist. Within four years, Johnson was instrumental in increasing the NAACP's membership from 9,000 to almost 90,000. In 1920, Johnson was elected head of the organization. Over the next ten years, the NAACP escalated its lobbying and litigation efforts, becoming internationally known for its advocacy of equal rights and equal protection for the American Negro. The NAACP devoted much of its energy during the interwar years to fighting the lynching of blacks throughout the United States by working for legislation, lobbying and educating the public. The organization sent its field secretary Walter F. White to Phillips County, Arkansas, in October 1919, to investigate the Elaine Race riot. 
More than 200 black tenant farmers were killed by roving white vigilantes and federal troops after a deputy sheriff's attack on a union meeting of sharecroppers left one white man dead. White published his report on the riot in the Chicago Daily News. The NAACP organized the appeals for 12 black men sentenced to death a month later based on the fact that testimony used in their convictions was obtained by beatings and electric shocks. It gained a groundbreaking Supreme Court decision in Moore v. Dempsey 261 U.S. 86 1923 that significantly expanded the federal court's oversight of the state's criminal justice systems in the years to come. White investigated eight race riots and 41 lynchings for the NAACP and directed its study 30 years of lynching in the United States. The NAACP also worked for more than a decade seeking federal anti-lynching legislation, but the solid South of white Democrats voted as a bloc against it or used the filibuster in the Senate to block passage. Because of disenfranchisement, African Americans in the South were unable to elect representatives of their choice to office. The NAACP regularly displayed a black flag stating, A man was lynched yesterday, from the window of its offices in New York to mark each lynching. In alliance with the American Federation of Labor, the NAACP led the successful fight to prevent the nomination of John Johnston Parker to the Supreme Court, based on his support for denying the vote to blacks and his anti labor rulings. It organized legal support for the Scottsboro Boys. The NAACP lost most of the internecine battles with the Communist Party and international labor defense over the control of those cases and the legal strategy to be pursued in that case. The organization also brought litigation to challenge the white primary system in the South. Southern state Democratic parties had created white-only primaries as another way of barring blacks from the political process. Since southern states were dominated by the Democrats, the primaries were the only competitive contests. In 1944 in Smith v. Allwright, the Supreme Court ruled against the white primary. Although states had to retract legislation related to the white primaries, the legislatures soon came up with new methods to severely limit the franchise for blacks. Legal Defense Fund. The board of directors of the NAACP created the Legal Defense Fund in 1939 specifically for tax purposes. It functioned as the NAACP legal department. Intimidated by the Department of the Treasury and the Internal Revenue Service, the Legal and Educational Defense Fund, Inc., became a separate legal entity in 1957, although it was clear that it was to operate in accordance with NAACP policy. After 1961 serious disputes emerged between the two organizations, creating considerable confusion in the eyes and minds of the public. Desegregation By the 1940s the federal courts were amenable to lawsuits regarding constitutional rights, which congressional action was virtually impossible. With the rise of private corporate litigators such as the NAACP to bear the expense, civil suits became the pattern in modern civil rights litigation. The NAACP's legal department, headed by Charles Hamilton Houston and Thurgood Marshall, undertook a campaign spanning several decades to bring about the reversal of the separate but equal doctrine announced by the Supreme Court's decision in Plessy v. Ferguson. The NAACP's Baltimore chapter, under President Lily May Carroll Jackson, challenged segregation in Maryland state professional schools by supporting the 1935 Murray v. Pearson case argued by Marshall. Houston's victory in Missouri X. Rel. Gaines v. Canada 1938 led to the formation of the Legal Defense Fund in 1939. The campaign for desegregation culminated in a unanimous 1954 Supreme Court decision in Brown v. Board of Education that held state-sponsored segregation of public elementary schools was unconstitutional. Bolstered by that victory, the NAACP pushed for full desegregation throughout the South. NAACP activists were excited about the judicial strategy. Starting on December 5, 1955, NAACP activists, including Edgar Nixon, its local president, and Rosa Parks, who had served as the chapter's secretary, helped organize a bus boycott in Montgomery, Alabama. This was designed to protest segregation on the city's buses, two-thirds of whose riders were black. The boycott lasted 381 days. 
The state of Alabama responded by effectively barring the NAACP from operating within its borders because of its refusal to divulge a list of its members. The NAACP feared members could be fired or face violent retaliation for their activities. Although the Supreme Court eventually overturned the state's action in NAACP v. Alabama, 357 U.S. 449 the NAACP lost its leadership role in the civil rights movement while it was barred from Alabama. New organizations such as the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee rose up with different approaches to activism. These newer groups relied on direct action and mass mobilization to advance the rights of African Americans, rather than litigation and legislation. Roy Wilkins, NAACP's executive director, clashed repeatedly with Martin Luther King Jr. and other civil rights leaders over questions of strategy and leadership within the movement. The NAACP continued to use the Supreme Court's decision in Brown to press for desegregation of schools and public facilities throughout the country. Daisy Bates, president of its Arkansas State Chapter, spearheaded the campaign by the Little Rock Nine to integrate the public schools in Little Rock, Arkansas. By the mid 1960s, the NAACP had regained some of its preeminence in the civil rights movement by pressing for civil rights legislation. The March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom took place on August 28, 1963. That fall, President John F. Kennedy sent a civil rights bill to Congress before he was assassinated. President Lyndon B. Johnson worked hard to persuade Congress to pass a civil rights bill aimed at ending racial discrimination in employment, education and public accommodations, and succeeded in gaining passage in July 1964. He followed that with passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which provided for protection of the franchise, with a role for federal oversight and administrators in places where voter turnout was historically low. After Kivy Kaplan died in 1975, scientist W. Montague Cobb became president of the NAACP and served until 1982. Benjamin Hooks, a lawyer and clergyman, was elected as the NAACP's executive director in 1977, after the retirement of Roy Wilkins. The 1990s In the 1990s, the NAACP ran into debt. The dismissal of two leading officials further added to the picture of an organization in deep crisis. In 1993 the NAACP's board of directors narrowly selected Reverend Benjamin Chavis over Reverend Jesse Jackson to fill the position of executive director. A controversial figure, Chavis was ousted 18 months later by the same board. They accused him of using NAACP funds for an out-of-court settlement in a sexual harassment lawsuit. Following the dismissal of Chavis, Merle Evers Williams narrowly defeated NAACP chairperson William Gibson for president in 1995, after Gibson was accused of overspending and mismanagement of the organization's funds. In 1996 Congressman Kwesi Mfume, a Democratic congressman from Maryland and former head of the Congressional Black Caucus, was named the organization's president. Three years later strained finances forced the organization to drastically cut its staff, from 250 in 1992 to 50. In the second half of the 1990s, the organization restored its finances, permitting the NAACP National Voter Fund to launch a major get-out-the-vote offensive in the 2000 U.S. presidential elections. 10.5 million African Americans cast their ballots in the election. This was one million more than four years before. The NAACP's effort was credited by observers as playing a significant role in Democrat Al Gore's winning several states where the election was close, such as Pennsylvania and Michigan. Lee Alcorn controversy During the 2000 presidential election, Lee Alcorn, president of the Dallas NAACP branch, criticized Al Gore's selection of Senator Joe Lieberman for his vice presidential candidate because Lieberman was Jewish. On a gospel talk radio show on station KHVN, Alcorn stated, If we get a Jew person, then what I'm wondering is, I mean, what is this movement for, you know? Does it have anything to do with the failed peace talks? So I think we need to be very suspicious of any kind of partnerships between the Jews at that kind of level because we know that their interest primarily has to do with money and these kind of things. 
NAACP President Kwesi Mfume immediately suspended Alcorn and condemned his remarks. Mfume stated, I strongly condemn those remarks. I find them to be repulsive, anti Semitic, anti NAACP, and anti American. Mr. Alcorn does not speak for the NAACP, its board, its staff, or its membership. We are proud of our long standing relationship with the Jewish community, and I personally will not tolerate statements that run counter to the history and beliefs of the NAACP in that regard. Alcorn, who had been suspended three times in the previous five years for misconduct, subsequently resigned from the NAACP. He founded what he called the Coalition for the Advancement of Civil Rights. Alcorn criticized the NAACP, saying, I can't support the leadership of the NAACP. Large amounts of money are being given to them by large corporations that I have a problem with. Alcorn also said, I cannot be bought. For this reason I gladly offer my resignation and my membership to the NAACP because I cannot work under these constraints." Alcorn's remarks were also condemned by the Reverend Jesse Jackson, Jewish groups and George W. Bush's rival Republican presidential campaign. Jackson said he strongly supported Lieberman's addition to the Democratic ticket, saying, "...when we live our faith, we live under the law. He Lieberman, is a firewall of exemplary behavior." Al Sharpton, another prominent African-American leader, said, "...the appointment of Mr. Lieberman was to be welcomed as a positive step." The leaders of the American Jewish Congress praised the NAACP for its quick response, stating that, it will take more than one bigot like Alcorn to shake the sense of fellowship of American Jews with the NAACP and black America. Our common concerns are too urgent, our history too long, our connection too sturdy, to let anything like this disturb our relationship. <laughs> George W. Bush In 2004, President George W. Bush declined an invitation to speak to the NAACP's national convention. Bush's spokesperson said that Bush had declined the invitation to speak to the NAACP because of harsh statements about him by its leaders. In an interview, Bush said, I would describe my relationship with the current leadership as basically non-existent. You've heard the rhetoric and the names they've called me. Bush said he admired some members of the NAACP and would seek to work with them in other ways. On July 20, 2006, Bush addressed the NAACP National Convention. He made a bid for increasing support by African Americans for Republicans, in the midst of a midterm election. He referred to Republican Party support for civil rights. <laughs> Tax-exempt status In October 2004 the Internal Revenue Service informed the NAACP that it was investigating its tax-exempt status based on Chairman Julian Bond's speech at its 2004 convention, in which he criticized President George W. Bush as well as other political figures. In general, the U.S. Internal Revenue Code prohibits organizations granted tax-exempt status from directly or indirectly participating in, or intervening in, any political campaign on behalf of or in opposition to any candidate for elective public office." The NAACP denounced the investigation as retaliation for its success in increasing the number of African Americans who were voting. In August 2006, the IRS investigation concluded with the agency's finding that the remarks did not violate the group's tax-exempt status. LGBT rights As the American LGBT rights movement gained steam after the Stonewall Riots of 1969, the NAACP became increasingly affected by the movement to gain rights for lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender people. Bond, while chairman of the NAACP, became an outspoken supporter of the rights of gays and lesbians, and stated his support for same-sex marriage. He boycotted the 2004 funeral services for Coretta Scott King, as he said the King children had chosen an anti-gay megachurch. This was in contradiction to their mother's long-standing support for the rights of gay and lesbian people. In a 2005 speech in Richmond, Virginia, Bond said, African Americans 
We're the only Americans who were enslaved for two centuries, but we were far from the only Americans suffering discrimination then and now. Sexual disposition parallels race. I was born this way. I have no choice. I wouldn't change it if I could. Sexuality is unchangeable. In a 2007 speech on the Martin Luther King Day celebration at Clayton State University in Morrow, Georgia, Bond said, If you don't like gay marriage, don't get gay married. His positions have pitted elements of the NAACP against religious groups in the civil rights movement who oppose gay marriage, mostly within the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The NAACP became increasingly vocal in opposition against state-level constitutional amendments to ban same-sex marriage and related rights. State NAACP leaders such as William J. Barber, two of North Carolina participated actively against North Carolina Amendment 1 in 2012, but it was passed by conservative voters. On May 19, 2012, the NAACP's Board of Directors formally endorsed same-sex marriage as a civil right, voting 62-2 for the policy in a Miami, Florida quarterly meeting. Benjamin Jealous, the organization's president, said of the decision, "...civil marriage is a civil right and a matter of civil law." The NAACP's support for marriage equality is deeply rooted in the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution and equal protection of all people." Possibly significant in the NAACP's vote was its concern with the HIV, AIDS crisis in the black community. While AIDS support organizations recommend that people live a monogamous lifestyle, the government did not recognize same-sex relationships as part of this. As a result of this endorsement, Rev. Keith Ratliff Sr. of Des Moines, Iowa resigned from the NAACP board. <laughs> Travel warning regarding Missouri On June 7, 2017, the NAACP issued a warning for African American travelers to Missouri. Individuals traveling in the state are advised to travel with extreme caution. Race, gender and color-based crimes have a long history in Missouri. Missouri, home of Lloyd Gaines, Dred Scott and the dubious distinction of the Missouri Compromise and one of the last states to lose its slaveholding past, may not be safe. Missouri Senate Bill SB 43 legalizes individual discrimination and harassment in Missouri and would prevent individuals from protecting themselves from discrimination, harassment, and retaliation in Missouri. Moreover, overzealous enforcement of routine traffic violations in Missouri against African Americans has resulted in an increasing trend that shows African Americans are 75% more likely to be stopped than Caucasians. Missouri NAACP Conference President Rod Chappell, Jr., suggested that visitors to Missouri should have bail money. Geography <laughs> 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 The organization's national initiatives, political lobbying, and publicity efforts were handled by the headquarters staff in New York and Washington, D.C. Court strategies were developed by the legal team based for many years at Howard University. NAACP local branches have also been important. When, in its early years, the national office launched campaigns against the birth of a nation, it was the local branches that carried out the boycotts. When the organization fought to expose and outlaw lynching, the branches carried the campaign into hundreds of communities. And while the Legal Defense Fund developed a federal court strategy of legal challenges to segregation, many branches fought discrimination using state laws and local political opportunities, sometimes winning important victories. Those victories were mostly achieved in northern and western states before World War II, when the Southern Civil Rights Movement gained momentum in the 1940s and 1950s. Credit went both to the Legal Defense Fund attorneys and to the massive network of local branches that Ella Baker and other organizers had spread across the region. Local organizations built a culture of black political activism. Topic: <laughs> Current activities. Topic youth Youth sections of the NAACP were established in 1936. There are now more than 600 groups with a total of more than 30,000 individuals in this category. The NAACP Youth and College Division is a branch of the NAACP in which youth are actively involved. 
The Youth Council is composed of hundreds of state, county, high school and college operations where youth and college students volunteer to share their opinions with their peers and address issues that are local and national. Sometimes volunteer work expands to a more international scale. Topic youth and College Division The mission of the NAACP Youth and College Division shall be to inform youth of the problems affecting African Americans and other racial and ethnic minorities, to advance the economic, education, social and political status of African Americans and other racial and ethnic minorities and their harmonious cooperation with other peoples, to stimulate an appreciation of the African diaspora and other people of color's contribution to civilization, and to develop an intelligent, militant effective youth leadership. ACTSA program Since 1978 the NAACP has sponsored the Afro-Academic, Cultural, Technological and Scientific Olympics program for high school youth around the United States. The program is designed to recognize and award African American youth who demonstrate accomplishment in academics, technology, and the arts. Local chapters sponsor competitions in various categories for young people in grades 9 to 12. Winners of the local competitions are eligible to proceed to the national event at a convention held each summer at locations around the United States. Winners at the national competition receive national recognition, along with cash awards and various prizes. <laughs> awards. NAACP Image Awards, honoring African American achievements in film, television, music NAACP Theater Awards, honoring African American achievements in theater productions Spingarn Medal, honoring general African American achievements Thalheimer Award, for achievements by NAACP branches and chapters Montague Cobb Award, honoring African American achievement in the field of health Nathaniel Jones Award for Public Service, first awarded to public servants in 2018 Foot Soldier in the Sands Award, awarded to attorneys who have contributed legal expertise to the NAACP on a pro bono basis Juanita Jackson Mitchell Award for Legal Activism, awarded to a NAACP unit for "...exemplary legal redress committee activities." William Robert Ming Advocacy Award, awarded to lawyers who exemplify personal and financial sacrifice for human equality. Topic: Partner Organizations. The Emerald Cities Collaborative is a partner organization with the NAACP. Topic: Criticism. In May 2010 right-wing journalist Andrew Breitbart publicized an edited video of a speech at a NAACP-sponsored Georgia event by USDA worker Shirley Sherrod. The mainstream press repeated his words without criticism, and the organization itself added their own words without properly checking what had happened. The NAACP president and CEO has since apologized, the organization has never had a woman president, except on a temporary basis, and there have been calls to name one. Lorraine C. Miller served as interim president after Benjamin Jealous stepped down. Maya Wiley was rumored to be in line for the position in 2013, but Cornell William Brooks was selected. See also African American Civil Rights Movement 1896 Chicago Better Housing Association the Crisis, Official Magazine NAACP New Orleans Branch NAACP Theater Awards NAACP Theater Award, President's Award Niagara Movement Racial Integration